Hello everyone and welcome back to my playlist of pathology. Today we will start tumors of blood vessel and uh, blood vessel pathology mein ya vascular pathology mein uh, not only blood vessel but also lymphatic vessels. We have already done vasculitis ka topic and now the tumors. Tumors usually divide karte hain blood vessels ke ya vessels ke into benign category uh, and obviously you know there is a malignant category but there is a well reported intermediate category which is called the borderline category. तो ये तीन तरह के ट्यूमर्स की क्लासिफिकेशन में आपको हेड्स याद रखने होंगे टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द बिनाइन ट्यूमर्स देन वील टॉक अबाउट इंटरमीडिएट एंड मेलेग्न ट्यूमर्स इन सेपरेट वीडियोस। सो ट्यूमर्स ऑफ द ब्लड वेसल्स एंड लिम्फेरिक्स इंक्लूड बिनाइन कैटेगरी विच आर हेमेंजियोमस विच आर वेरी वेरी कॉमन सो टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस दैम There is a locally aggressive neoplasm category that metastasizes infrequently, and then there are rare malignant tumors. The malignant tumors are angiosarcoma. So, if you want to have a very quick bulleted form of table, this is the one classifying vascular tumors into benign category and intermediate category, which is also called borderline category, and then there is a malignant version, which is angiosarcoma. So, in the benign category, there are hemangiomas, for example. which are the benign tumors of blood vessels heme angioma heme is for blood then there can be lymph angioma which is for lymphatic blood vessels then there are few others so let's begin our discussion pehli cheez to aapke samajh mein aa gayi ki categories kya kya hain then the vascular neoplasms arise from the endothelium obviously the tumor has to arise from some cellular uh, you know background so in the blood vessels you know there is uh, endothelial layer and this endothelial layer is uh, the one which is composed of endothelial cells and these cells lead to formation of endothelial uh, yeah vascular tumors and ye jo endothelium it give rise to different categories agar the tumor is arising from the endothelium of the blood vessel this is called heme angioma if it is coming from the endothelium of lymphatic vessel it is lymph angioma if it is uh, malignant it is angiosarcoma so these are uh, different categories so primary tumors of large vessels such as aorta pulmonary arteries vena cava they occur infrequently so they are not very common basically and are mostly sarcomas sarcomas coming from the smooth muscle component of the blood vessel you know the blood vessel is composed of tunica intima which is endothelium then tunica media which is all smooth muscles so if the tumor is coming from the smooth muscle this is sarcoma although a benign hemangioma cannot be confused with an anaplastic angiosarcoma they are very you know distinct categories lesions of uncertain malignancy are sometimes also observed jisme aapko ye pata hi nahi chalta ki blood vessel mein the tumor is coming from endothelium or the smooth muscle but that's a rare scenario usually you can easily identify which type of blood vessel uh, tumor it is congenital or developmental malformations are usually non neoplastic and they are reactive vascular proliferations uh, matlab ye bhi uncommon nahi hai main aapko batau hum embryology mein karte hain ki embryologic developmental issues hote hain blood vessels ke which are manifested as uh, different lesions in the body but uh, by far in most uh, uh, you know cases it is uh, non malignant in general benign and malignant vascular neoplasms are distinguished by the following characteristics so benign tumors agar honge blood vessel ke they are composed of vascular channels filled and uh, filled with blood vessels obviously ya lymph jis bhi blood uh, ya lymph vessel mein wo tumor hoga and they are lined with the monolayer of the normal appearing endothelial cell so you will still see a lot of endothelial cell jaise aapko pata lagega ki ye vascular ya lymphatic channel hai and uh, there will be a lot of channels so bahut sare channels ka matlab ye hai ki there is growth of the endothelial cells and if we talk about malignant tumors they are more cellular to usme proper channels nahi hai blood vessel filling nahi hoti uske andar and they do not form well organized vessels so confirmation of endothelial derivation of such proliferation may require immuno uh, staining so basically baat ye hai ki if the blood vessel has uh, a benign tumor you सेक्शन पे जब आप इसको माइक्रोस्कोपी पे देखेंगे यू विल फाइंड अ लॉट ऑफ वेल ऑर्गेनाइज चैनल्स विच आर लाइन विद द एंडोथेलियम जबकि अगर आप मेलेग्नेंट ट्यूमर को देखेंगे सो दैट विल बी बिजार दे विल बी अ लॉट ऑफ सेल्स यू विल हैव एन आइडिया कि ये शायद एंडोथेलियल सेल हैं बल उसको आपको कंफर्म करना पड़ेगा इम्यूनो हिस्टोकेमिस्ट्री से कंपेयर इट विद द बिनाइन कैटेगरी बिनाइन कैटेगरी में यू विल क्लियरली ऑब्जर्व के द लीजन इज Uh, composing of endothelial cells and there is uh, a very clear distinction between the two categories of tumors now let us begin with the benign tumors or tumor like conditions the first one is vascular 
ectasi, ectasias. So ectasias basically is a broad terminology. It's a general term which is used for any local dilatation of a structure such as uh, telangiectasia. It is used to describe a permanent dilatation of a pre-existing small vessel such as capillary venule. So a venule or a capillary a small vessel is dilated. This is known as telangiectasia. So these lesions can be congenital or they can be acquired uh, but they are not true neoplasms. You have seen that on their skin part, par, face par, ya arm par, ya somewhere you see a red spot which is big irregular usually uh, not true neoplasm okay um isliye dekhen is category mein they have described a birthmark which is called nevus flemius to aksar log hote hain jinke abdomen pe kahin ya face pe kahin uh, there is uh, light pink ya deep purple type of flat patch hota hai that is basically a very common form of vascular ectasia so uh, this is uh, not a tumorous condition this is a benign condition yeah tumor like condition but you have to remember this is the dilatation of uh, small blood vessels either capillaries or venules okay it's a common example hai. birthmark which in medical terminology is known as nav navus flemius right then um, the so-called port wine strains uh, is a special form of navus flemius these lesions tend to grow during childhood thicken the skin surface and do not fade with time so they persist such lesions occurring in the distribution of trigeminal nerve are associated with uh, sturge weber syndrome so that is a typical association ki agar trigeminal nerve ki uh, pathway par uske root par ye lesion nazar aata hai so it, it is associated with a specific syndrome right the uncommon congenital disorder is not very common um is associated with facial port wine nevi, ipsilateral venous angiomas and cortical leptomeninges, mental retardation. So that's a comprehensive list of uh, signs and symptoms which you see in these patients. Thus, a large facial telangiectasia in a child with mental deficiency may indicate the presence of additional vascular malformation. So whenever you see a child with, uh, you know, a stain on the face, for example, and if there is little bit of mental uh, deficiency as well in the mental milestones as the child grow you should always think that body mein kahin aur bhi vascular malformations ho sakte because they come as a package then there is a category which is called spider telangiectasias they are non neoplastic also and these lesions manifest as radial often pulsatile array of dilated subcutaneous arteries or arterioles and ye bahut sari conditions mein liver conditions mein dikhta hai for example uh, because they are associated with hyper estrogenic states of the patient so spider nevi hum clinical examination mein dekhte bhi hain ki they are like this spider shaped star shaped aur ye pulsatile blood vessels hoti hain inko aap blanch kare yani inko dabaye chhode dobara se inme blood bhar jata hai that sort of thing is spider telangiectasia ye bhi dilatation of small blood vessels then there is a category which is known as osler weber rendau disease which is hereditary condition and this is hemorrhagic telangiectasia it's an autosomal dominant condition it is hereditary and it is caused by mutation in some genes which encode for tgf or uh, some other pathways in the endothelial cells the telangiectasias are malformations composed of dilated capillaries ye baat main pehle aapko bata chuka hu ke jo blood vessels dilate hoti hain that is the condition which we call telangiectasias they are widely distributed over the skin oral mucous membranes ya internal organs may be so blood vessels within the gi tract within the urinary tract they may also be enlarged aur uh, uh, ye is condition ke sath associated hai hereditary hemorrhagic telangiectasia so what we are talking up till now is a broad category of uh, tumor like condition uh, or a benign condition of blood vessel which is known as ectasias ectasias uh, are simply dilatation of blood vessels is ki birthmark a common category hai nevus flemius then there is a category called port wine stain then there is a category called spider telling the particularly associated with liver conditions ya hyper estrogenic state of a person and then there is a hereditary form all of them come under the heading of vascular ectasias yani ki dilatation of blood vessels then comes the uh, kind of true benign tumor which is known as hemangioma they are very common tumors composed of blood filled vessels so actually endothelial cells proliferate in a will in in a way that there are multiple uh, you know blood vessels there filled with the blood while hemangiomas typically are localized lesions confined to head and neck region most of the times they may be more extensive so commonly they are in the head and neck region but they can be elsewhere in the body several histologic and clinical variants have been identified so first one for example is capillary hemangioma 
Uh, they are the most common types and they occur in the skin, subcutaneous tissue, mucous membranes and oral cavities, lips, as well as kidneys and spleen. So this is the distribution for capillary associated hemangiomas and histologically they are composed of thin walls of endothelium and therefore they are called capillary hemangioma because the histology resembles a capillary. Then there are juvenile hemangiomas. They are also known as strawberry hemangiomas of the newborn skin and they are very common and they can be multiple uh, in the body. They grow rapidly for a few months, but then they fade by one to three years of age and complete regression has seven years. Stuck. So they are called juvenile hemangiomas. Then there can be pus associated hemangioma, which are called pyogenic hemangiomas, yeah, granulomas. They are also present in the capillaries and they manifest rapidly growing red pedunculated lesions on the skin, on the mucous membranes, and microscopically they resemble exuberant granulation tissue they also bleed and they may have pus cells within them so that's why they are called pyogenic pregnancy tumor is also a type of pyogenic granuloma that occurs infrequently in the gingiva of pregnant women so if a person is pregnant uh, complains of uh, a granuloma pyogenic granuloma so you should know the association it's not uncommon then there is another category which is known as cavernous hemangioma. They are composed of large dilated vascular channel. Compare this to, for example, capillary hemangioma. They are composed of capillaries. So they are small blood vessel hemangiomas and these are comparatively larger dilated blood vessels. Compared with capillary hemangiomas, cavernous hemangiomas are more infiltrative, frequently involve the deeper structure. Aapko yade, capillary hemangioma, I told you, it is more affecting like skin subcutaneous tissue. Isiliye in ke jo problems hai, wo bhi different hai, because they are associated with uh, large blood vessels. So for example, thrombosis can have an intravascular thrombosis is very common and subsequent dystrophic calcification. So all these are not uncommon stuff. Brain hemangioma are problematic because they may cause problems related to compression of the adjacent tissue. Ye problem hai brain mein, koi bhi tumor develop ho, because there is no space. So whatever develops here, compresses the nearby structures. Then cavernous hemangiomas constitute one component of the von hippel lindau disease. So von hippel lindau is a complex disorder, just multiple issues. Hote one of them is cavernous hemangioma. All important information, okay? Now, in some cases, cerebral cavernous hemangiomas are familial, yani ke hereditary honge, mutations identified hai, for example, in CCM1, CCM2, and CCM3. Then we have some other benign conditions of blood vessels, for example, lymphangiomas. Up to the point where we they were all hemangiomas. Hemangiomas, se pehle humne baat ki, vascular ectasias ki. Now, hemangiomas. Ke baad, lymphangiomas. So, lymphangiomas are benign lymphatic counterpart of hemangioma. Jesse uh, blood vessels, small blood vessels may multiple blood vessels proliferate karti hai, capillaries, small blood vessels usually, sometimes also large blood vessels, then the condition is called hemangioma. If the same thing happens in vascular ke bajaye lymphatic channel mein, then this is called lymphangioma. It can be a simple uh, lymphangioma or a cavernous lymphangioma. Uh, in kipher alternate names bhi hai, simple uh, Hemangiomas, uh, lymphangiomas are also called capillary lymphangiomas and cavernous are also called cystic hygromas. Ye naam aksar aapne suna hoga but bahut se student ko pata nahi hota. Cystic hygroma is same thing as cavernous lymphangioma. Ye superficial structures mein hoga, ye deep structures mein hoga. Thik hai? Probably uh, yehi discussion humne kiya tha hemangiomas mein. Cavernous hemangiomas were large blood vessels involvement, deep structures. So simple lymphangioma are slightly elevated or sometimes pedangulated lesion up to 1 to 2 cm in diameter, predominantly in head and neck region, also in the subcutaneous area of uh, axilla. And histologically, they are single endothelium lined lymph vessels. Okay? And they contain lymph, obviously, because blood cells are not in because it is a lymphangioma, it's not a hemangioma. Then we have cavernous lymphangioma. Uh, they are typically found in the neck or axilla in the children. They are more rarely in the retroperitoneum. This is the distribution line for cavernous lymphangioma. They can be large, uh, filling the axilla or producing gross deformities in the neck. So they are deep, they are big, okay? And uh, uh, they are a common feature also in Turner syndrome, right? Then there is a category which is known as, we are still talking about benign tumors of uh, blood vessels and lymph vessels. Now let's talk about glomangioma. So hemangioma, tumor of blood vessel, lymphangioma, lymphatic vessel, now glomus tumor. 
they are benign, exquisitely painful tumors arising from specialized SMCs of the glomus bodies. Uh, arteriovascular structures may, uh, you should know what are the glomus bodies, which are thermal, thermal regulation ke liye important players. Hai. And distinction from cavernous hemangiomas is based on the clinical feature and immunostochemical staining for a smooth muscle marker. So these are basically specialized smooth muscle cells, which are glomus bodies, which are uh, particular protein expression profile. Hota hai. So they can be easily differentiated from hemangiomas. Okay? Usually they are found in the distal portion of the digits, at the end of the end. Uh, fingernails ke niche and uh, in code nikalna padta hai. excision is curative and they are painful tumors okay right so um aapko clear difference pata hona chahiye ye glomangiomas blood vessel ki endothelial lining se grow nahi hote they grow from the smooth muscle cells of the glomus bodies okay then we have bacillary angiomatosis it's a vascular proliferation in those patients who have uh, you know compromised immune status such as patients with hiv now the lesions can involve skin bone brain the two species have been implicated uh con organisms is disease ke sath associated uh, jate bartonella hensilae and bartonella quintana and both of them um, have been reported to be associated with a specific vascular proliferation in immunocompromised patients. So, if you exam me, this is that there is a patient with HIV, yeah, there is a pregnant female, or there is a person who is on steroids because of uh, transplantation, renal transplantation, or any other, um, and you are given the condition of vascular proliferation. Think about these organisms, okay? So, Bartonella hensilae, for example, uh, it's a principal reservoir. It's for domestic cat. So, in the house, we have Be careful. This organism causes cat scratch disease and it can lead to vascular proliferation leading to angiomatosis. Similarly, Bartonella quintana is transmitted by human body lice. Okay, so nits and lice. And this microbe was the cause of trench fever during World War One. Now, skin lesions from the red papules and nodules or rounded subcutaneous masses is uh, made. Histologically, there are proliferation of capillaries. Joke endothelial cells are lined. Hoti hai. Other features include infiltration of neutrophils and uh, granuloma formation. Sometimes there is some granular tissue, there is some debris because inflammation. Zaire neutrophils can be jayenge, so they start firing and releasing chemokines and cytokines, and there is local damage. The bacteria induce host tissue to produce hypoxia and usable for HIF1 alpha, which drives VEGF production and vascular proliferation is a bharti hai, because that's a positive uh, vascular proliferative marker. Okay. And it is cured, cured by antibiotic because the bottom line was infection. So treat these infectious organisms, the person will be okay. Okay. So this is dry topic, but important topic. So that's all about the benign tumors. Next video, I will talk about intermediate uh, tumors ki or malignant tumors of blood vessels. Ki. So till then, uh, this diagram bhi hai hai for bacillary angiomatosis. So these are the lesions which you see because of the infection of uh, these any of these or both of these bacteria particularly in the immunocompromised patients okay so next time we'll talk about intermediate yeah borderline tumors and malignant tumors of blood vessels till then take care of yourself